Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Rodia Jarvis and we're here today to continue reading The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. So Mrs. Rodia Jarvis is going to be reading chapters 28 and 29. So open your books to page 72 and the chapter is called The Old Goose. Ordinarily, the forest animals would have run away from the monster, but they were awfully curious why she was carrying a hatchling on her shoulder. And once Roz explained the situation, the animals actually tried to help. A frog pointed Roz up to the squirrels. A squirrel recommended that she speak with the magpies. And then a magpie sent them over to the beaver pond. The ground grew soggier, the grass grew taller, and soon the robot and the gosling were looking across a wide, murky pond. Dragonflies buzzed through the reeds. Turtles sunned themselves on a log. Schools of small fish gathered in the shadows, and there, floating in the center of the pond, was an old gray goose. A very good morning to you, the robot's friendly voice boomed over the water. I have an adorable little gosling with me. The goose just stared. I am in great need of your assistance, said Roz. Actually, the gosling is in need of your assistance. The goose didn't move. Food, peeped the gosling. Food, food. That tiny voice was more than the old goose could bear, and she began gliding across the pond and squawking to the robot. What are you doing with that hungry hatchling? Where are his parents? There was a terrible accident, said Roz. It was my fault. This gosling is the only survivor. If there was a terrible accident, why does your voice sound so cheerful? The goose flapped her wings. Are you sure you didn't eat his parents? I am sure I did not eat his parents, said Roz, returning to her normal voice. I do not eat anything, including parents. The goose squinted at the robot. Then she said, do you know who his parents were? I do not know. Well, they must have belonged to one of the other flocks on the island because nobody in my flock is missing. Will you take the gosling? I most certainly will not, squawked the goose. I can't take in every orphan I see. You say this is your fault? It seems to me that it's up to you to make things right. Mama, mama, peeped the gosling. I have tried to tell him that I am not his mother, said the robot, but he does not understand. Well, you'll have to act like his mother if you want him to survive. Then there was that word again, act. Very slowly, the robot was leaning. Very slowly, the robot was learning to act friendly. Maybe she could learn to act motherly as well. You do want him to survive, don't you? Said the goose. Yes, I do want him to survive, said the robot but I do not know how to act like a mother. Oh, it's nothing. You just have to provide the gosling with food and water and shelter, make him feel loved, but don't pamper him too much. Keep him away from danger and make sure he learns to walk and talk and swim and fly and get all and get along with others and look after himself. And that's really all there is to motherhood. The robot just stared. Mama, food, said the gosling. Now would probably be a good time to feed your son, said the goose. Yes, of course, said the robot. What should I feed him? Give him some mashed up grass, and if a few insects get in there, all the better. Roz tore several blades of grass from the ground. She mashed them into a ball and dropped them into the nest. The gosling shook his tail feathers and chewed his very first bites of food. By the way, my name is Loudwing, said the goose. Everyone already knows your name, Roz. But what's the gosling's name? I do not know. The robot looked at her adopted son. What is your name, gosling? He can't name himself, squawked Loudwing. And then, with a loud burst of wing beats, the goose fluttered up from the pond and landed right on Roz's head. 
Water streamed down the robot's dusty body as Loud Wing leaned over the nest. Oh dear, he certainly is a tiny thing, said Loud Wing. He must be a runt. I'll warn you, Roz, runts usually don't last very long, and with you for a mother, it'll take a miracle for him to survive. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. However, the gosling still deserves a name. Let's see here. His bill is unusually bright color. It's actually quite lovely. If I were his mother, I'd call him Bright Bill. But you're his mother, so it's up to you. His name will be Bright Bill, said Roz, as the goose fluttered back to the water. And we will live by this pond where he can be around other geese. I will find us a sturdy tree nearby. You will do no such thing. The goose flapped her wings. A tree is no place for a gosling. Bright Bill needs to live on the ground like a normal goose. Loudwing sized up the robot. I suppose you two will need a rather large home. You'd better speak with Mr. Beaver. He can build anything. He's a little gruff at times, but if you're extra friendly, I'm sure he'll help you out. And if he gives you trouble, remind him that he owes me a favor. Chapter 29 the beavers. Every day, the beavers swam along their dam, inspecting and repairing it. The wall of wood and mud allowed only a trickle of water to pass through, and it had turned a narrow stream into the wide pond that many animals now called home. As Roz and Brightbill walked around the pond, they passed hundreds of chewed up tree stumps, proof that the beavers need a constant supply of wood. And this gave Roz an idea. The robot swung her flattened hand, and the sounds of chopping wood echoed across the water. They were soon replaced by the sounds of footsteps and shaking leaves as the robot carefully walked along the beaver dam with a gosling on her shoulder and a freshly cut tree in her hands. The beavers floated beside their lodge and stared at the bizarre sight with open mouths until Mr. Beaver slapped his broad tail in the water, which meant, Stop right there! The robot stopped. Hello, beavers. My name is Roz, and this is Brightbill. Please do not be frightened. I am not dangerous. She held out the tree. I have brought you a gift. I thought perhaps you can use this in your beautiful dam. No, thanks, said Mr. Beaver. I have a strict policy never to accept gifts from monsters. Don't be ridiculous, interrupted Mrs. Beaver. We can't let a perfectly good birch go to waste. I'm afraid I must insist, said Mr. Beaver. Mrs. Beaver turned to her husband. Remember how you asked me to point out when you're being stubborn and rude? Well, you're being stubborn and rude. Then she turned back to Roz. Thank you, monster. If you'd be so kind as to drop the tree in the water, we'll take it from there. I am not a monster. Roz tossed the tree like a twig. I am a robot. The tree smacked against the water and sent the beavers bobbing up and down. Just then, Bright Bill started peeping. Mama, hungry! So Raj dropped a ball of grass into the nest. The gosling thinks you're his mother, came a quiet voice. It was Paddler, Mr. and Mrs. Beaver's son. His real mother is dead, said Raj, so I have adopted him. There was a brief silence. Then Paddler looked up at Raj and said, you're a very good robot to take care of Bright Bill. Mr. Beaver sighed. Yes, yes, that's very good of you, Roz, but I don't understand why any of this has to do with us. My son and I need a home, and Loudwing said you would help us build one. Of course she did, Mr. Beaver muttered to herself. Loudwing gets me out of one lousy jam, and I spent the rest of my day doing her favors. Mrs. Beaver glared at her husband. Sorry, he said, realizing he was being stubborn and rude again. Stay right there, Roz. We'll need to have a family meeting. The three beavers slipped under the water, and a moment later their muffled voices could be heard inside the lodge. The robot stood on the dam and patiently waited with her son. Mama! Mama! Yes, Bright Bill, I am trying to act like a good mother. A ripple, and Mr. Beaver's head appeared above the water. If you bring us four more trees, good, healthy ones, maybe I'll have time to help you and the gosling. That is wonderful, said the robot. We will be right back. 
that's the end of chapter 29. I hope you love the two chapters that I read from The Wild Robot. Bye.